Okay, welcome back. Uh, I'm going to talk about relative motion now. Relative motion. So two objects, or maybe three objects moving. So let's start with the uh, simplest case, and then we'll build on it. Relative motion. So uh, let's just use two objects and then we'll talk about three objects. So here is, uh, you're here, let's say. You are here, right? You're here. And uh, let's say the frame of reference or the coordinate system, this is u, x, and y, right? And let's say here is a, another, uh, let me just, this is U, all right? This is A, and this is B. This is object B, all right? And let's say object B is moving away from you. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So I would call the velocity of B with respect to you the velocity of B with respect to A, like this. <coughs> Excuse me. The velocity of B with respect to A. So let's say the person is moving to the right, let's say 10 meters per second, all right? So how do you determine their position? Well, you draw a vector from you to them. This is called the position of object B with respect to object A. The position of object B with respect to object A. How about if I, for object A, let's say if you're object A, you're riding you're driving in your car or riding in a car or a train um, and then uh, somebody's driving you obviously and then you look from the back window and you look at people you see them if they are standing you see them moving backward relative to you so the position of person a with respect to person b is this one the position of a with respect to b looks like that and it's equal just the negative because this is a vector to get the position of B with respect to A, you draw a vector starting from A all the way to B. The arrow points at B. And then to determine the position of A with respect to B, you draw a vector starting at, a, at, at B and then ending at A. That's the position of A relative to B. And they're just the negatives of one another. Uh, so the position of A with respect to B is equal to the position of B with respect to A, but there is a minus sign. Now, to find the velocity of B with respect to A, well, you just, it's the derivative, remember. So the velocity of B with respect to A is the derivative of this one, BA. And so it's equal to negative the velocity of A, the velocity of A, the velocity of A with respect to B. Just take the derivative of this vector. To get this one and take the derivative of this vector to get this one there's a minus sign so in other words in other words if uh, vb with respect to a is 10 meters per second in the i hat direction if you think that person b is moving to the right at 10 meters per second then person b will think then uh, person b will, will think you are moving backward at 10 meters per second That, that's all I wanted to say. So that's that. So in other words, if you switch the subscripts here, RAB is equal to RBA, but with a minus sign. That's all I wanted to say. So now, uh, this is not it. I wanted to just show you that AB and BA, they are related by a minus sign. So let's say now, your coordinate system is here. This is your coordinate system. You are person A. This is coordinates of person A. And let's say there is an object here, object here, called C. So the position of C with respect to A is this vector. The position R C with respect to A. But then let's say there is another person, this is X, this is Y, another person who is moving, so they have their own frame of reference, their own coordinates, let's say this is you riding in your car, 
and let's call u person b, then the position from person A to person B is here. The position of person B with respect to A is this one. So what is this vector then? What is this? How are these two related? The position of C with respect to B. How is it related to BA and CA? How are they related? Well, notice if I flip the arrow here, I get RCA minus, if I flip it, I get minus RCB. So um, I have this vector plus the negative of that vector will give me this vector. So here is, let me write it. So RBA is equal to um, RCA plus the negative of this vector, so minus RCA. B, R, C, B, R, C, B. So let me uh, uh, move this one, uh, or yeah, let me move this one to here. So R, C, A will equal to, uh, move this one to here, so I get R, C, B plus R, B, A. Yeah, let me move this one to there. And I get this interesting formula. Good. And if I take the derivative of this formula with respect to time, I will get the velocity of object C with respect to object A, relative to object A, is equal to the velocity of object C relative to object B, plus the derivative of this will give me the velocity of object B relative to object A. So they just add up. So the velocity of C uh, with object C relative to object A is equal to the velocity of object C relative to object B plus the velocity of object B relative to object A. So in other words, so let's say, uh, I'll give you just a practical example. Let's say you're here, you are object, you're object, <laughs> you are object A, you're standing still. And then there is a train here Train. Let's call the train is object B, the velocity of B with respect to A. And the train is moving to the right, and let's say it's, it's moving at 10 meters per second. And then there is a person within the train, let's call that person object C, and that person is moving within the train, so the person thinks they're moving in the train, and let's say they're moving in the train at 5, uh, the velocity of this person C with respect to B, velocity of, let me draw it in orange, the velocity of C with respect to B is 5 meters per second. So what's the velocity of this person C relative to you? So you see a train moving at 10 meters per second, and within the train there is a person moving at 5 meters per second in the same direction as the train. So intuitively you would say it's 15, and that's what this formula is saying. It's saying that the velocity of C with respect to A, the velocity of C with respect to A, will equal to the velocity of C with respect to B plus the velocity of B with respect to A. And so the velocity of C with respect to B is 5, and the velocity of B with respect to A is 10, and so that's 15 meters per second, as we expect. But this is more systematic than doing this, than the intuition, because sometimes they get complicated. By the way, notice here, CA, the outer subscripts here, this is a C and this is an A, and then the inner subscript, it's like it cancels, and you just get the outer ones, C, B, B, A. Okay? So let us do uh, two examples in this. So uh, I got the names, uh, so uh, yes, so let's say, yeah, I, I got the names uh, mixed, so let me get them. Sure. So you have a, uh, let me write it down here, so example. This is a one-dimensional example. So here is Amy, Amy because she starts with the letter A. And then this is Carlos, Carlos is in a bike, Carlos because the name 
something that I see. So Carlos. Uh, Amy is not moving. So this is the speed of Carlos with respect to Amy. Amy sees Carlos moving at five meters per second. And then there is Bill in his car. Bill, because there's the letter B. Bill. And Bill is moving relative to Amy. The velocity of Bill relative to Amy is 10 or 15. 15 meters per second. All right? And the question is, what's the velocity of uh, Amy with respect to Bill? So to find the Amy with respect to Bill. So V A relative to B. So what does Bill think Amy is doing? So Bill is going at 15 meters per second this way. Amy is moving, uh, not Amy, I'm sorry, uh, Carlos is moving at 5 meters per second. So Bill will think Amy uh, is just lagging behind by 10 meters per second every second because he's going ahead of her. Not her, uh, Carlos, this is Carlos, I'm sorry. I should, Bill, Carlos, Amy. Okay. And so, uh, so what is the velocity of Carlos? Yeah, that's where all the mistake came from. What is the velocity of Carlos relative to Bill? Okay, well, I'm going to write, I know that the velocity of A relative to, uh, oh, uh, the velocity of C relative to A is equal to the velocity of B relative to, uh, the velocity of C relative to B plus the velocity of B relative to A. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to do. Let me put this back. I want this, CB, so I'm going to move this to the other side. So the velocity CB is equal to velocity CA uh, minus the velocity BA. Okay. What's the velocity of C relative to A? The velocity of C relative to A is 5 minus the velocity of B relative to A, that's 15, and so you get so that's how you would do such a thing. Yeah. And if I said, what's the velocity of B relative to C, VCB, uh, VBC, V of Bill relative to Carlos, so Carlos would think Bill is moving ahead of him at 10 meters per second, which makes sense because BC will equal to the negative of CB, and so it is equal to positive 10 meters per second. Okay. Okay. Uh, here is another uh, example that uh, you usually see. You have uh, um, a, a plane, an airplane, an example. So you have an airplane, it's in the air, and it's flying at the plane, flying at uh, 500 meters, uh, I'm sorry, 500 miles an hour, at some velocity, 500 miles an hour east, right? Relative to the air. So the, uh, the, the, uh, the plane is just thinks it's drifting this way. So the plane, the plane is going this way. The velocity of the plane relative to the air uh, is let's say 500 miles an hour, 500 miles an hour, and it thinks it's going in the I hat direction, okay? And then there is wind, wind, so the wind is drifting at 50 miles an hour relative to the ground, 50 miles an hour relative to the ground. So there is wind, the velocity of wind, um, the velocity of the, of the air, or the wind, air, relative to the ground is 50 uh, miles an hour and it's downward so it's in the, in the j hat direction 
but it would have a minus a minus a minus sine a minus sine. And so the question is, what's the velocity of the plane relative to the ground? Plane relative to the ground. What's the velocity of the plane relative to the ground? Well, we'll just use this. So I know that the velocity of the plane relative to the ground relative to the velocity of Remember, the outer subscripts will be outer, so like this, and then two inner ones. Inner ones will take the subscript of the third object, uh, so that's the air. They have relative to air, air relative to ground, like so. Let me do vector sign, let me take vector sign. So the velocity of the plane relative to the ground will equal to what? Plane relative to the air is 500 pi hat. And then air relative to the ground is minus 50, 50 j hat. Like so. And so the plane will be moving in a, so there is the air, the air is about 50 this way. So the plane will end up moving like this. So it's like you trying to swim across a river. If the water is still, you will just cross that way. All right, great. But if, if there is water, as you swim across, the water is drifting you constantly. So instead of crossing the river straight and ending up here, the water would drift you and you end up there. You think you're swimming straight, but the water is drifting. Now the question is, what if the plane wants to fly straight? If we want the velocity of the plane relative to the ground to just be straight horizontal, meaning it will not have any J component, at what angle does the plane have to go? So if the uh, if we want to just fly horizontally, then we would like the plane, the velocity of the plane relative to the air, the velocity of the plane relative to the air, we would like it to go at a certain angle, let's call it theta. There is still wind, the, or the air, the velocity of the air relative to the ground is 50, Fif negative is 50 j hat, negative 50 j hat. Uh, this is sloppy, so let me just rewrite it straight down. The velocity of the air relative to the ground is minus 50 j hat. Minus 50 j hat. So at what velocity uh, should the plane go? The plane can go, the maximum speed, let's say, of the plane is 500. So the magnitude is, it's going at 500 miles an hour, but at a certain angle. So we would like the, this is the x component the velocity of the plane relative to the air, uh, x component will be the velocity of the plane relative to the air, with the, the, the magnitude of that times the cosine of theta, and then uh, there it will have a y component, right? Because it's going this way, so it would have a y component, and that y component will be times the sine of theta. So in other words, the velocity of the plane relative to the air will be this, will be the magnitude of the, of the velocity relative of the plane relative to the air, the magnitude, without a vector sign, it's just magnitude. So the velocity of the plane relative to the air times the cosine of theta, that's the x component, and we call that the x direction, it's i hat, and then plus the velocity of the plane relative to the air uh, sine theta to get the y component, and that's in the y direction, so it's uh, j hat. J hat. And the wind the velocity of the of the air relative to the ground is equal to uh, is equal to uh, just minus fifty uh, j hat. And I want to determine what theta what theta is what theta is. Well, I want the velocity of the plane relative to the ground to just be the velocity of the plane relative to the ground and to just be in the i hat direction. I do not want it to have an, an x hat, a, a y hat, a, a j hat component. I would like the plane, after the accounting for the wind, I want it to fly just straight east. So what should the angle be? So I would set this equal. So I would like, so the, the x component of the plane relative to the ground the v plane 
ground x component will equal to the v plane relative to the air x component plus v air relative to the ground x component. x component have to, have to equal. And uh, the plane relative to the uh, to the air x component is uh, is this is v plane relative to the air cosine theta. The problem is I don't know what theta is. So let me go to the y component. The velocity of the plane relative to the ground y component. I would like that to uh, actually let me write it first. It would be the velocity of the plane relative to the air y component plus the velocity of the air relative to the ground y component. And I want this to be zero. I do not want the plane to fly north nor south. I would like it to just go east. It just has an x component, no y component. I would like this to be zero. So the velocity of the plane relative to the air y component is this. It's v plane air sine theta. Air relative to the ground y component, it only has the y component. It's actually minus 50. Minus 50. You might say, why didn't I write j hat? Well, I'm just talking about the y component. That is the j hat. So that's that. And you got 0 here. And so you got the velocity of the air uh, of the... The velocity of the plane relative to the air has a magnitude of 500. So it would be 500 sine theta is equal to 50. Move the 50 to the other side. And so theta would be sine inverse of 50 over 500. And let me just get my calculator. You get sine inverse of 50 over 500 is 110. So that's about 5.7 degrees. 5.7 degrees. So the plane has to fly 5.7 degrees northeast in order to account for the air or the wind. And so it will end up just going east. Okay. And so if I ask you what's the velocity of the plane relative to the ground, then knowing theta, you go here, you plug in 500 times the cosine of 5.7, and that gives you the velocity of the plane relative to the, uh, to the ground. Okay. And so that's it for relative motion. Uh, we might do a couple more problems uh, at the end of the chapter, but for now that's it. I'm going to move to uh, circular uh, motion uh, next. So I will do it in the next uh, video.